In this episode, I sit down with No One Network, one of the biggest emerging underground movements in Australia, covering music, art, audio, visual, and more. In this episode, we discuss No One's new studio and AV club, how they discovered subculture, the beginning of No One Network and how that came to fruition, Goalie's book, Not Your Ordinary, Brisbane City's graffiti scene in the golden era, the hip-hop scene in Australia, No One's live show memories, the future of No One, and more. Hope you enjoy. Check it, check. Golly, Smack Daddy, thanks for sitting down with me today, boys. We spent this morning on the grind in your new studio space, polishing off some new rowdy tracks. Can you tell us about the move into uh, that new space, the process and vision behind that and AV Club? Yeah, so I'll start by getting into the studio. Um, so originally, we had, well, I mean, how far back do you want me to take it here? Just take us to the new studio and AV Club. All right, cool. To so start off with. Um, my homie, Dan Bones, and uh, my other Shout homie. Shout out, Dan. Shawnee D, they had the studio over at Alderley, and I was going going over there a bit. Um, Dan's produced a lot of stuff for me, mixed a lot of my stuff. Same with Scrub, um, and sort of our old place was coming to an end. And um, the boys hit me up and basically said, you know, should we renovate this spot and turn it into what it is today? Which was a pretty um, hectic process. It was like four or five months of like pretty hard pretty hard work um doing all the labor ourselves doing walls doing roofs started as a concrete slab started as a concrete slab and a tin tin over sh- tin shed sort of thing and yeah now it's what you see today it's it's still got a little few touches you know we need to finish up but yeah built that place from the ground up so that was um that was a process you know and when you've done it all like that um and you kind of have this extra little bit of appreciation. Yeah, totally. You've done because um, it was hard work, you know, and it was a lot of stressing and this and that. But I saw the photos of some late nights. Yeah, went into that. Falling asleep on the floor and in, in the unfinished studio, like staying up all night, going to Bunnings at six in the morning, having just been there when they closed the night before, <laughs> like <laughs> looking like absolute. I don't know, creatures. Yeah, being uh, jacks of all trades. Yeah, man. Well, um, we like to think of ourselves as jacks of all trades. I feel like some actual tradesmen probably wouldn't agree. But <laughs> yeah. Shout out YouTube. Yeah. Shout out, yeah, yeah. Shout out YouTube <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> um, yeah, sick. What about AV Club? Yeah, I guess AV Club, about 18 months now. So that's kind of like the home for the visual side of things. Yep. Uh, that's kind of where, um, I guess... No, we were all running in one house. We had a music studio downstairs, and then I was upstairs running the edits and doing the meetings out of this one big house. And is that um, the house that I came to, Smack? Yeah. The one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over in the slopes. Yep. Um, and yeah, it was getting a bit much for all of us, I think. You know, it was the, the next step from taking it from the home. You know, spending six, seven days in the, the one spot. Fucking yeah. Never had to get out of my PJs. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was just a natural progression to taking it to the next next spot of being a bit more like a business. Mm. Um, so I had a bunch of homies that are in the same boat and um, we started out in a space a little bit smaller and then within like two to three months we decided it was time to upgrade. And um, our homies next door, Mainline Gallery, so a bunch of artists that we've been working with told us about this next door and um, it perfectly lined up. So we took a big leap, went from probably about 80 square metre office to now a 200 square metre warehouse. Yeah, it's a fucking dojo. Yeah, so I was... Well, it's been fun and games, and yeah, now we're at a point where it's really rolling over in itself. It's got its own identity, and um, you know, it was like a little baby out of the Noah network, but now it's its own thing. And, yeah, um, yeah, it's cool. There's about 15 of us here now. We got videographers, photographers, editors, designers. We got a model agency now working out of here. A um, bit of everything, makeup artist, and yeah, so it's all just a hub. Yeah, we can all support each other and like physically have that space, so you can actually meet up. You know, it's like. When you're selling street culture or, you know, part of that world, you know, it feels a bit weird when you're spending all your time at home. So it's good to have a place, you know, if I can get up in the morning, you know, got to... Feel like you're doing something proper, like... Yeah, (laughs) go out and see the world, whether jump on the train, jump in the car, like see some stuff, Mm. go out for lunch and then, you know, come back to the office and that's work and then home's home. Yeah, totally, man. Um, Can you both give us sort of a little insight into like your earlier lives of, of how you ended up sort of gaining an interest into music, art and graph creative, just that whole, whole, whole sort of subculture in general. Well, um, 
my my journey kind of started documenting artists like predominantly around the street culture and you know just young delinquent shit it was like graffiti culture and running around caves and rooftops and how that all linked together and you know following the street culture scene in brizzy with you know like it was a pretty it's a pretty small community like if you if you're about it and you're around or you're going to the shows or you're buying clothes from the independent shops like you all kind of know each other yep um so that's how it kind of bridged into the music um i met toby and nerve from um syntax junkie side and mask inspector jolly rotten and that was how it kind of bridged into the music side of things and um started documenting them over at over at our very first studio which was just a shed in the back of a queenslander yep and um, that's when we linked up with Smack. He saw our early movements, and yeah, so tell a bit yours, brother. Um, well, I guess, um, oh shit, I would have been like you know eleven or twelve years old, and um, one of my homies started showing me all this hip hop, um, and so like I just became obsessed. I don't know, like what clicked so much with me mm. but i mean i guess just the, what didn't click you know smack daddy awoke the smack daddy awoke yeah. um and then i just started freestyling all the time like just getting around school freestyling on my computer downloading all the discographies and stuff like it took me a little bit to kind of um as i get got a bit older kind of grow to get more knowledge of like the aussie stuff mm. um I was just obsessed with all the American stuff, you know, like I remember just like downloading the discographies of like, um, you know, Rakim, Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, Outkast, blah, 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 everyone. And just like, like I'll have to listen to every single album for, of what's the <laughs> top, top hip hop albums, like just a little kid. Um, and they're yeah, just freestyling all the time. Like I've got um, videos of like, lunchtime at school in like grade six or grade seven or something when my mates like pen tapping remember pen tapping mm. when everyone would pen tap yeah yeah he'd be pen tapping and i'd be freestyling um i mean i might release it to the public one day it's pretty <laughs> funny I was like oh you fat, recorded it yeah yeah, like yeah yeah mad fat little kid um and then yeah so that just kind of evolved and you know everyone's always telling me yeah you're mad freestyle you're mad freestyler and um i just became bought my first mic a little usb microphone when I was like in high school, um, had a few friends. We had the Three Worlds. That was the first rap crew mm. that I started in. That was three Worlds. Three Wallets. Three Wallets. Yeah, that was the name. Why? Um, Do you remember? Why did we? Where did we come up with that? It's a pretty mad name. Honestly, I, I think it was just like some stoned. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Shit. Like we just had three wallets um, on the table. Yeah, like you know, we we had my mate. Elliot had um, his shed, you know, the OG bong shed where mm. his mum would let everyone hang out um, and we'd just go around there and I'd always be pushing the boys, like, come on, let's record. And they'd be like, man, we're just trying to hang out. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And three always, Wallace. Yeah, and I was always, like, super motivated and whatnot. Um, and so I just started kind of branching out, trying to meet up with other people, trying to do the same thing with me. And um, eventually I um, kind of... Because I knew what the boys were doing with the syntax junkies and stuff, just mm. like similar area, similar age group. And I was like, this shit's fresh. Like, these guys are fucking cool. Um, and so I met them a um, few times here and there. And then I went to the studio with my mate Dan, um, who was doing a bit of music there and was a bit more familiar with the boys. And I remember the first time I met Nerve and Scrub, they were recording Lunch Bars, mm. um, which is their collab track where they go back and forth and like um from there just kept getting around the studio um you know and we all just hit it off kind of yeah just started working on music together and i just what year was that roughly was that um <sighs> yeah 2016 2017 yeah and we're syntax say. junkies still going at that point Twenty sixteen, I think, when they just did their big conglomerate album. Yeah. And then a lot of us started all pushing our own single stuff. What was Syntax Junkies though? Who was in that? You had Thought Junkies and Syntax yep. Era. So you had Spectre and Mask and Syntax Era. Yep. And then you had Jolly Rotten and Nerve from the Thought Junkies. Yeah. And then they came together and made this little super crew. Yeah. 
And I think they worked for like three or four years on that album. And then when we were all coming together and linking up was when they kind of got that all finished and yep. put it together. I think it's a 21 track album. Wow. Yeah, it was fucking super hard. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And Epic. Yeah. So yeah, you started started jamming from there. And then yeah, man. And then it all just kind of rolled on from there. You know what I mean? Um, and so since that time, I've kind of started, um, you know, did a lot of traveling, a lot of meeting people, mm-hmm. a lot of learning stuff about... Um, the local music which i didn't really know before you know what i mean just mm. being like a little internet kid you know um and yeah i mean as a, as a kid i was always kind of getting around you know skateboarding doing hood rat shit but not really so much with the graffiti culture or anything like that it yep. was more just like you know whatever kids would get up to but yeah i was just always obsessed with hip-hop and then that kind of just merged into what was already there. Yeah, cool. Because I was going to ask, did you all meet sort of through house parties or raves and shit like that? Or was it just through music? Um, studio. Yeah, studio. Yeah, through the yep. studio. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, who knows, maybe we had met at a house party or a rave yeah. beforehand. <laughs> yeah. You know, similar age and whatnot. Yeah, sick. Uh, yeah. Nice. So what does um, No One Network mean to the both of you? Like, what is the soul of No One Network and what is the meaning behind Lost, Found and Free and the movement itself? Um, well, No One Network, I remember we were sitting around at the first studio we had, um, trying to think of a name for this kind of rap collective that was kind of founded in doing ciphers and, um, documenting all that. And I'd come into the picture a little bit later, um, but yeah, we were just going back and forth and, um, the name No One, because the the boys had the network, which was what they called their cipher. Yep. And um, we kind of thought, well, if you throw no one on front of it, it's got the double entendre of like no one, number one. Number and one, like yeah. No one, like no one specific person. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'll let Kyle give his little spin on it. Yeah, so it was um, around the time when we were all linking up, I had this Facebook album called The Network as well. So it was like the, the first big cipher we ever did, the conglomerate. And um, we also had this like album of photos, and it was kind of all the all the shit we got up to, and then like it had the music element, but then there was all of us just like kicking back in this one mm. big house, you know, and and all the people that kind of contributed that, you know, it was photos of us cu- cutting up our own stickers, and making our own albums, and we had this one place called Louis Street as well, where we do like little little raves under the house, like we call them mic nights. Yep, we bring our own PA systems and had the vinyls and. Um, yeah, just invite a lot of homies over. And a lot. then back then it was just like a whole bunch of whatever and whoever kind of getting involved and supporting this movement. So you had a lot of different cool people involved and you had friends that had just started their own clothing lines, friends that were doing like the vintage resale and, you know, people just getting into drawing. And so that was kind of all bringing that in together of this like culture and lifestyle that was behind the hip hop, you know, behind the music and... And that really helped us all kind of have this like point of difference amongst a lot of rappers in the scene. So I think Aussie hip hop had been like one kind of stereotype for a while. Mm. We were all kind of trying to change that. And um, yeah, you had the, the double on Chandran with the, you know, no, no one number one. But we also kind of felt at that time it was like no one really cared about us. Yeah. Like, and they kind of embraced that in a cool way. Yep. Yeah. Triple. Triple. Yeah. Triple. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Catalina wine mixer. Yeah, so we're yeah. just we're just the no ones, you know. We were kind of in the shadows doing our thing and didn't really care if no one cared either, you know. So that was kind of making something out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Just the and you know you had all these other elements that were behind the music that no one really knew about. Mm. You know, so it was like it created this platform to really, you know, showcase them. You know, so and you talk about you know longevity and and yeah and really i think what you're doing sick because you're bringing you're making a space and creating a hub for people who may not be connecting to anything you know that can come together and 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 have a space to feel like there's no boundaries to their creativity you know what i mean yeah that's pretty that's pretty much on point man i guess that's that lost found and free element as well like Mm. um, a lot of us kind of did feel a bit lost in what we were doing or a lot of people from this culture don't really um know what to do with it or to, to find longevity and, and positivity in it. And, you know, the, the toxic side sometimes associated with that that lifestyle of totally. living free. So it was another place where we all found ourselves a bit and where we could kind of, you know, have some longevity and community and, like, faith that, like, you know, mm. we could all support each other and make it a bit easier. Mm. So, it was, yeah, the lost, found and free. So, you know, we're still doing what we want and 
know, before before I was Carl Golly, I had a thing called nine to five, and that was kind of playing on the, the you know, the, the whole systematic way of life that a lot of people go along or feel like we kind of have to do because you try to do the creative stuff or you try to find this pathway. And it's so hard. It's so <coughs> hard. It's yeah, really hard to be sustainable. And you see so many people, talented people, put their heart and soul into it, and um, they haven't really found found somewhere to help them support that. So. Totally. What was the nine to five thing? Um, that was just that lifestyle I was living. You know, like, oh yeah, like right. Be documenting all these photos, yep. um, and then you know, I got to a point with that where I was kind of like, I think I wanted to make it a bit more personal mm. and um, drop drop the brand behind it and kind of made it more about the Carl Golly and um, what I was documenting at that time. And then that was when I started bridging into the boys and stuff. That's how Toby found me back yep. in the day. Nerve on this nine to five channel, yeah, you know, trying to like challenge that whole nine to five kind of stereotype and channel it into your own sort of thing yeah like mm. you know just doing this creative shit full time what were you documenting a um, little bit of everything so um i kind of started out with a lot of graffiti stuff and like abandoned buildings and like caves and i have a book called not your ordinary which kind of documented that part of my life yep and it was um wasn't about any like strict stereotype or one anything it was just kind of you know i was at a time in brisbane and you know, people kind of used to say there was nothing to do and there was no cool shit out mm. there and that was kind of like part of my mission was to document all the cool talents you stuff. create the cool shit yeah, yeah it was it was all happening and it was all out there and um i just don't think anyone would really like showcase that or you know all that hadn't done it in that way you know it was um documenting a journey over five years and then putting it into a book you know a lot of a lot of people at that time you know it's what post can you put up that week or you mm. know like the cafe breakfast or like you know photos of them out at the clubs and shit it was like the kind of yeah that same thing just kind of document something different subculture version yeah yeah, yeah. If anyone doing anything cool you know it wasn't urbex it wasn't graffiti culture like it was just whatever the fuck in this like kind of yeah lost found and free world that hadn't really been documented or and done in a positive light as mm. well. like the beauty behind it not just it being dark totally what were you was that bro i think the book was about 2012 to 2015 yep yeah and then it was um 2016 2017 when the music stuff started kicking off and so then, then you came over started doing visuals and meeting yeah there's a whole whole other pocket of that subculture that i hadn't really documented mm. and um you know being able to bridge all the people i met from that other world into this music element because yeah, right. part of that hip-hop lifestyle is you know all the pillars and four elements five yeah, elements. Yeah, that's it so uh, and you know like people are out skating or doing graph or you know just on their general day like they're listening to music you mm. know so was music representing that lifestyle and then the lifestyle representing the music a bit mm. kind of bridging that and yeah so that's where we ended up so 2018 um or the 2017 i released the book and kind of like wrapped up that part of that segment of my life and that journey and then 2018 kind of moved into the more of the music side and started no one yeah yeah i don't know may 2018 and we kicked it off with like a bright light sci-fi and you know we had our friend little jay there she in brizzy like yeah, yeah, yep. we went and rented out a studio and we just went real weird with it. A whole bunch of styles. And yeah, we had a stylist friend there who's like a little Jay. She's doing five years garage sales. <laughs> she used to have us at the vintage markets just like doing our thing. And yeah, mad. Yeah, just repping that network of extra extra element that we had. Yep. And we're lucky to have, yeah. Sick. Yeah, I can imagine it would have been mad, that traction at the start. Like, did you? how did you start getting traction? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you started getting shows everywhere and Nerve is obviously... And no one has got a pretty good reputation for itself in Australia. You know what I mean? What year was that? That, that started sort of... Um, that was the one takes. Yep. Um, so we started doing these, like, little bit extra one takes where there was, like, through that house I was talking about in Louis Street where we were all just hanging out. You know, mm. Scrub was living on the couch. There was a lot of the syntax crew there. And, um, bit of a dungeon. Yeah, and like lunch bars was kind of part of that. Um, we had one one take that we did um, that popped off pretty big with Scrub and Nerve um, on Facebook. We got like three hundred k. Yeah, mad views, and uh, I think three sixty shared that. So that was like a big moment. It's all um, it takes. Yeah, and at that point, Scrub was just on a holiday as well. And then after that, he was like, "I'm going to move up to Brizzy," and um, he kind of came part of the crew after that. But yeah, we were just doing these weird extra one takes where we'd. And they start at the top of the stairs and then walk through the hallway and then end <laughs> up in the basement. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Had all the posters and everything on the walls and you know, we were, like a few of us were all living together. So it was kind of like showcasing that instead of just doing a rap video in front of a graph wall, yep. or like out on the bridge. You know, it was kind of yeah, just being a bit extra, bit extra. authentic, bit creative at home. 
Yeah, and they were popping off on Facebook as well. It was that time. Yeah, before Insta. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. don't people people weren't used to that shit on Facebook, you know, seeing like a bit of art or culture and stuff. So it was something interesting and yeah. nice to watch and yeah, we'll get some shares and it and yeah, it was at cool. the start were those beats I don't know if I've seen the videos you're talking about, are they high energy or are they more chill boom bap sort of Boom bap was where it all started yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And then we started doing the grime stuff with yep. um, Nerve and that was how we kinda linked up with the East Coast a bit more. Yep. So it was going down to like Melbourne and Tassie. Like a connection with Wombat and Greeley down in Taz. Yep. So I've had like a bit of Boom Bap and then the grime with Wombat and then um, linking up in Melbourne with um, Retainer for the Boom Bap stuff and then with Fracture and the 50 50. Yeah, yep. And the Smash Bros and everything going down yeah, there. Yeah, sick. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So um, this is more towards you, Golly. Brisbane City, River City, you know, in my opinion, is like some of the best quality graph I've seen in Australia, like DTS and WOs, BNFs. River City itself was one of the Holy Grail movies in the early days, um, even down to the music and the quotes that they have, don't let the system chew up and spit you out. That really resonated with me. Um, have you seen that movie? Yeah, the River City. Yeah, yeah and how yeah, do you, yeah, like, what is the graffiti scene like currently in Brisbane, do you reckon, compared to that era? Like, in terms of that whole sort of era compared to now from what you can see? I think a lot of people call that, like, the golden era. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there was a whole whole scene developing and culture growing and, and the, that massive influence they all had, you know, from what they were taught and then how it's they insane. pushed it. And, yeah, they went to a crazy, crazy level with it all. Mm. And I think that's kind of part of the, probably the demise a bit. It was like 2011, Campbell Newman really went fucking hard in Brisbane. I think they upped the buffing to about three million um, and they had, like, a pretty savage approach with it all. Like, I remember they were buffing everything on the lines, at face the lines, even on private property. Wow. Yeah, so they pretty much tried to delete that whole era. It's pretty rare to find a piece, like, pre-2010 on the lines now. Yeah, right. And like, even the last, last few years, you know, you can maybe find something a couple of years old, but it's pretty rare. Um, but, yeah, they really scoped into the psychology of it, man, how to fuck with everyone and make and everyone... And what the law's getting... Yeah, the law's have been tight and yeah. just the approach that they had in GTF and all that. and um, Yeah, just deleting all, like, the the positive side of it. Uh, we got rid of every legal wall in Brisbane. So oh, really? Yeah, so we don't have any painting walls here. There's no legal walls in Brisbane. Fuck. Yeah, the only walls you can paint are privately owned, and if the owners of the company are okay with it, and then they, you still need to have pieces of paper, otherwise you're getting shit. You're getting um, spear tackled by Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they'll still... Um, Constable Kev. They'll put cameras up in the bushes as well. So yeah. Like they'll still monitor them and come down and... Yeah, so there hasn't really ever been a safe place or really a supported culture for it, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, part of that might be why those guys went so hard as well and why they were, you know, G'd up to do what they did. Mm. Um, yeah, it's definitely different times now, but it's cool, man. And like, you know, everything goes in cycles. And totally. Seeing a new generation definitely come through and do their thing. And, I mean, slowly getting there, you know, we've got some, some BSAF and things like that that's mm. starting to support that and accept it. And, you know, grass cool now, hip-hop's cool, street culture's all kind of mm. getting cool and more accepted, so... You're finding less of the heroes and the general public being as angry and aggressive towards it, but um. Yeah, it's funny how it's evolved, and I think the floods as well would have fucked, would have fucked that and ended up on every news channel in Australia. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty. 2011 floods or whatever that was. Crazy moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, something I think about a lot and I'm grateful for is the new energy that can be brought to a hip hop show. Combining like high energy beats with high energy flow can really create a hectic atmosphere. Like, yeah, you're getting mosh pits at hip-hop shows. It's almost like bringing, like, a punk or metal flavour to the scene. And a lot of heads, bad mouth, the new wave of rap beats, but that's what people always do with change. What are your thoughts on, on these changes in new ways? I mean, yeah, it's just no more one box now, is it? Mm. You know, there's a lot of different lanes, and that's allowing people to kind of, you know, have their own lane to build, you know, rather than having to fit into one stereotype. and um, Just stand there head bopping. Yeah, I think um, that's what, like hip hop kind of got a bit stagnant for a bit, and what we were trying to do and change things up was like you know a new experience. You know, you go to you used to be going at gigs and it was a certain type of crowd, and it'd be like you know six seven hours of straight hip hop, and it would be you know pretty aggressive sometimes. And um, yeah, it's just kind of bringing that back that you don't know what you're gonna get now. You yeah, know, it's fucking a new, nice. new experience every time, and you know, a place for everybody as well to feel comfortable and shit, not like certain crowds or whatever trying to push one vibe. You know, so. It's definitely cool now. There's different lanes, so you can have different shows and different types of, you know, something for everyone now. That's mm. like, yeah, you get Smack's input. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I feel as though that 
old school flavor is kind of coming back into fashion a little bit Mm. um because you know there was there's it's always like kyle was saying with the graffiti it's i guess it's the same with hip-hop there's cycles you know like um grime was really popular like you know it was like the boom bap Mm. phase and then the grime phase and then you know a lot of those artists who were doing grime kind of branched out into different you know whatever subgenres of beats but Mm. in terms of the live element of stuff i mean um that like that contrast between the shows of like you know i remember like rocking up to open mic nights and stuff and it's just like people kind of just showing up to like appreciate the lyricism and um you know the beats and Mm. you know it was very crewy and who you know and this and that but i feel like um people want to just party you know and so it's attracting a different crowd whereas like you know still (laughs) kind of bringing the same old i wouldn't say old heads but you know old heads come to the shows and stuff and appreciate it and love what we do but like you know people can still come to a hip-hop show and be like fuck yeah these guys borrowing out this is mm. mad but then it can also bring someone who's like i want to mosh i want to jump nice. around i want to yep. get sweaty you yep. know and just have a good time so like i still um i still really appreciate i guess both sides of the coin and i feel like um the best approach is to kind of factor in both elements and try to find that middle ground mm. like you know um some artists might jump up and have their whole backing track and be rapping a couple words here and there, which is cool. You know, people have different sounds. There's like different, there's so many subgenres and there's so many people doing all of that. Mm. In Brisbane, especially, like it's kind of different, different sounds, different subgenres, um, different cultures and whatnot. But like, man, it, it's. It's all the same. Everyone wants the same thing, you know. Everyone wants to go out, have a good time, party, whatnot. So, like, yeah, I I think um, like what we do, kind of finds that middle ground of like, yeah, atmosphere, bro. Blending it, yeah, 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 yeah. blending it, and like, yeah. and the atmosphere it creates is next level. Like, you never would have got that in in previous years. You know what I mean? Like those sorts of beats gets rowdy. I think it's just, yeah, it's just the music. Yeah. It's just the sounds of the beats. It's mm. the, like... The bass, the energy, and the lyrics yeah. too. Like, you were talking about barring out before. People are barring out more than t- t- f- ten times more than ever. Yeah, I know. guess, like, that double time style mm. has mm. kind of um, taken over. And, like, um, you know, people singing now, and there's nothing wrong with that. You mm. know, people doing melodies and mm. sing-along sort of stuff. Like, people really connect with that shit. Um, what if I will suck on that, bro? <laughs> yeah like uh, yeah people you know people just want to want to move it's like sure. yeah can you um can you tell us a bit about uh some of no one's past live shows and some of your favorite memories and gigs to date uh, have a good thing <laughs> um fuck i remember uh i think it was the mama's boy tour we were we were in Sydney, and um, we played this venue. I can't remember. Do you remember what venue it was? The under the pub in Brizzy. In Sydney. In Sydney. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been a few, but um, it was like packed, mm. packed, packed, packed to the rafters, sold out, and like um, the walls were like dripping in sweat. Yep. Like the humidity in the room was insane. Like. Uh, by the end of the show, <laughs> me and Nookie were like on stage in our undies <laughs> and it was just like normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good um, as fuck. It was, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I remember my mum texted me. She's like, I see you on Instagram in your underwear. Get some clothes on. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. This isn't like a fashion choice. I'm yeah, not trying yeah. to show off, you know? 100%. But um, man, just the... um. Yeah, just the mosh pits. I guess there's so many, like, so many memories. That's probably my favourite one. Who played at that one? That was the Nerve, the Nerve headline. Yep. So Nerve, and then the supports was Nookie, and 
I think just Nookie supporting. I might be wrong. Sorry to whoever listens to this that was supporting <laughs> that I forgot. I mean, we'd done a, a few shows, so yeah, yeah, that was nuts. Um, and like, you know, the the shows, the the last show we just did in Brisbane, um, where I was DJing for Nerve, um, it was mental. It was so awesome, but like these COVID restrictions, yeah. you know, they're just like really kind of, um, you know, shafting shafting us, man, because. You know, we played the zoo um, sometime last year and that was sold out, like 500 people, but, you know, we could only bring 300 people. Mm. So the room's half empty, but regardless... Were you they know, sitting down? Uh, well, no, they weren't <laughs> sitting down. It was funny. We rocked up and they've got, like, bar stools and little bar benches, I don't know what you call them, and they're, like... We're like, are the people meant to sit down and like, oh, yeah. And then like after like five minutes, all the bar stools and the benches off. had yeah. been pushed to the back. I don't think people had to sit down because they had like a little buffer zone and then all the seats. And we were just like, this is dangerous, you know. Mm. Um, like when we played the Yours and Ours Festival, um, they had, it was a 20,000 people festival, open air festival. They had 20,000 chairs, plastic chairs <laughs> in this big like footy field or whatever it was. It was like absurd. I'm just like, what? What the hell is going on here? Um, they had like this rule where like you had to stand in front of your chair. Um, I guess this is one of the like weird memories of not a show we've done, but I guess somewhere something uh, we've experienced. Like, yep. I remember Tones and I is like doing. Her, she's like headlining, and she'll finish a song. She'll be finishing Dance Monkey or something, and then they'll be like. <laughs> Stop the music, have these big sl- signs flashing and be like, everyone has to return to your seats. And it's like in the middle of the headline set, just like no music for like 15 minutes. So that's like the big scale, but yeah. like, you know, yeah, that um, that was interesting. What month was that? Last uh, year? N- start of the year, like two months ago, three months ago or something mm. in Wollongong. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else? Man, so many memories. Um, Any good Melbourne shows? Heaps of good Melbourne shows, mm. man. Melbourne always shows out. Um, the last show uh, we did in Melbourne as a crew was... Oh, yeah, I've just forgotten about COVID the last 12 months. Yeah, yeah before that. Um, oh, I'm blanking, it's been so you would have been, You would have been nuts for touring if, if COVID hadn't happened. This probably would have been... Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was um, it was going, it was going skits. Mm. So nerves just been down in Melbourne, but he had to do it on his ones because like just the restrictions <laughs> and yep. the this and that. Yep. Um, yeah, he had to get there way before the show to make sure it could still happen because of like shit popping off. Or yeah, well he, he left on he left on the Monday to get down there, and the next day it was locked down in Brisbane. Oh like, yeah, so look, we've got all like uh, we got a few other things that we need to do during the week. So mm. usually we'll come down on, like a Thursday or a Friday mm. before the gig on a Saturday. Yep. But um, Nerve kind of called it. We could see it happening, so we got locked down on the Tuesday. Yep. So we were red zone, so none of us could go down. Fuck. Yeah. So um, he was lucky enough to go down there, and Victoria government said it was all good for him to go down, and yep. he had to go on the Monday and then go to the gig on the Saturday. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, we did that on the ones, but, you know, because we've done a few years of going down to Melbourne and yep. building family down there, it wasn't like he was completely on his ones, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's people, people in every state, for sure. Yeah, now, you know, after yeah. a few years, it's cool, you know. We've got Mogwai and the Posse Shop Boys and um, a lot of the people we met through, like our mate Mike and Ollie and, you know, so it's been cool, you know. Even even Toby's on his ones, but he's still got all the, the other no, yeah. one, no one extended family down there to make the show happen. And for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say like the last few years have been have been huge for Australian hip hop and like seeing the rise in a big way for dudes like Chillin' It and Nerve and heaps of others. What do you think are some of the key components to that? Like what, like what is some of the key components that's led to that progression and rise? Like no, like we haven't seen in such a long time. You know, um, the journey that I've watched, mm. uh, it was a big moment. I guess um, you know, Wombat was massive. Yeah, popped off. Um, we had, you know, there was a big relationship with um, Nerve and, and Wombat and that duo. Mm. And then around that same time, you had 201 kind of born. And then that yep. led to, like, body bag media movement. Yep. And all coming under that one that one house. And then, um, yeah, Chillin' It joined that. 
Yep. And then from there, everyone just started linking up, you know, and you had 50-50 was a big bridge for a lot of us, you know. 50, yeah, yeah, those ciphers. Yeah, because we were going, the, there were events, yeah, the 50-50. So we did the ciphers on the weeks of the event. Yep. Um, that's how those ciphers kind of happened, you know. It was um, Nerva and Wombat doing their grime thing and linking up with the boys and you had people like Shadow there as well. Yep. Um, so, yeah, you had, you know, Shadow from Perth and the OD clan. You had Body Bag Media in New South Wales. Um, you know, and then you had Wombat down in Tassie and then Nerve doing his thing. And I remember there was one point where they all linked up at Body Bag Media and they all kind of met properly. And, um, yeah, that was... Yeah, and then the Get Body Tour, you know, and that was, you know, those boys were really spearheaded that whole movement of bringing a lot of people together. We went down to Sydney for the first one and Nerve was on that lineup and Triple One was there. Yep. So that was our first time meeting them. So, yeah, you see, had started to see this organic link up of everyone coming together. To what do, was that event shows. you said? Cool. Get Bodied Festival. Get Bodied Festival. So, who was at that? So The Sydney show. Yeah. yeah we had. Is that, where, is that where Chilina talks about how he flew everyone in? Is that like Iggy's talking about when he but speaks about that? Do you know? Um, it might be. It might be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that was the Sydney show. But a lot of those boys were from New South Wales. Yep. Um, you know, you had Husky and um, Snow were in Melbourne at the time. And yep. they came up from there. And then you had Triple One. Fuck, that would have yeah. been a big night. Mitch Austin Menes. Yep. Um, and then you had Nerve, a couple others, I think. And then they linked up and came to Brizzy. And that was like the famous Brizzy show. They got shut down or whatever. But the, the cops came through and um, they blocked off the end of the road and they had 500 people spilling out onto the street. You know. Wh- where was it? Um, in Brisbane, yep. yeah. And in the um, street? Yeah, and that was the one where um, they got put on the channel, Channel 7 News or Channel 9 News. Yep. I think chilling it had that bar about won't stop till we get shut down and get get onto Channel Nine News or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like they, without them even realizing, they just like made this like thing that was spoken about happen, um, and that was massive. I remember that kind of spearheaded a lot of the movement. And then yeah, so get body get body moving the body bag media and what they did for that new wave and bringing people together and yeah, for starting sure. new ciphers and the episodes. Yeah. You know, it was. Real cool. Content that people yeah. hadn't seen before, really. Yeah, shout out Bagsy. Cause yeah. He put up a lot of the boys and that was his house that kind of became a meeting point for a lot of them. And Yeah, so. Yeah, sick. What, um, can you give us a detailed insight on, on sort of the future of No One and what direction it's heading in and, and what your opinion is on the future for, for Hip Hop and Oz? Um, personally, um, I mean, we've got the music has got its own you know, space now. It's got, you know, this full professional studio that the boys have built from the ground up. So that's a perfect home for us on that side. And then now with AV Club, we've got the visuals on lock and a whole team here. And then all the extended family around that, you know. So we've got these two massive resources that everyone can kind of, you know, work from and build off. And so now it's kind of just about putting the art back into it all, you know. Mm. And that was what it was. And that's why it was so organic and real for so long was that, it was us all hanging out and doing shit. You know, that's how I was able to do the photos and the videos and do that stuff because it was all of us just moshing together, you know. Um, and now we've kind of all, you know, grown up a bit and then we've set up these other things to have longevity behind it. You mm. know, if you've only for so long, can you just be moshing in the house? You know, 100%. You need to figure out how to make it something sustainable. And I think now that we've got, like, you know, the platform's doing its thing and we've got these buildings and these resources, now it's about taking it back to the art and just getting shit done and... Mm definitely um a new wave coming in there's like you know the platform's been built that there's been people that have grown up with it and watched it and um got some new music coming through you know ecb family was a massive part of that like jk chiggs nate and will and like all the boys that they're kind of getting through their little network down there and, mm. and like that was a good example i guess of like you know bringing some people outside of that first um organic family click, click, yeah and then bring them in and see what we can do with these resources and yeah, so um, I think the next step for me personally is trying to bring some more people in, add some new flavors, and um, bring it back to the ciphers and bring it, you know get some music out and mm-hmm. you know it's um less less work now, more play. I think we've done, yeah, the, done sure. the hard work on on getting the getting the ground going, getting, getting it off the ground. Yeah, getting yeah. it out, getting it out of the house. You know, mm. to like having having these places now. Now we can potentially the next five years. You know, just focus on the art. Totally. Yeah. Sick. What about you, Smack Daddy? Uh, yeah, well, Kyle pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Mm. Like, um, you know, for the last however long, we've all been kind of pretty focused on, like, securing ourselves and, like, um, you know, just, like, building our skills and our networks. And, um, you know, like, now it's all about kind of reaching out and, like, 
doing shit on the ground and, um, you know, like working with new artists and following through with kind of what we've done so far. Like, um, you know, we've got plenty of ideas in the works that like we just need to kind of tick off and like, yeah, just like just keep putting on. Like it's kind of Brisbane is the, the home, the home ground, I guess, and mm. that's like what our main sort of focus is. Like there's a lot of mad artists um, on both sides, like the visual side and the audio side um, that, you know, are kind of coming into the picture and, um, you know, we're trying to, still trying to grow ourselves, you know, like you never stop learning. You know, I'm learning new stuff about producing or mixing or all that stuff all the time. Um, so, you know, still trying to grow and, and everything, but I uh, feel like, you know, we've got a platform to keep building and make something that, like, everyone can be proud of. For sure. You know, and young, you know, like, younger artists, um, up-and-coming artists, like, just trying to sort of put the feelers out and see who's ready to put in the... Put in the work. Put in the work, mm. Yeah. Because, like, you know... That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Um, speaking for myself, like, I spend... You know, I'm either at home or at the studio. That's pretty much it. I, I like, you know, still go out here mm. and there and mm. try to socialise when I can. But that's pretty much the mentality. Like... Hunger. Yeah, don't really do too much else, whether it's, um, you know, I'm producing or I'm just trying to focus on my own music and whatnot. Like, that's... That's the headspace. That's the mindset. Um, just like work rate, um, and you know, like while it may seem, you know, like at periods people are quiet and whatnot. Someone who's gonna um, really like represent something and kind of take themselves somewhere and take the culture somewhere mm. is usually always working, always thinking about working, and that's mm. the type of energy we're trying to just keep growing on and building on and like develop continue to develop like what we've sort of started mm. so just yeah like to sum it up new artists new um new music new artists new visuals just keep everything rolling you know because this is something that is not just brisbane anymore but it's based in brisbane and we want to see this thing just right out like sure past our lifetime mm. you know I mean, that's crazy to think about. No, nah, it's not. That's, that's how it goes, though. That's where I see this happening, mm. you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Epic. Sick. Thanks for uh, coming on, boys, and thanks for doing what you're doing and bringing people together, giving people purpose. I'm looking forward to seeing how the future unfolds for no one and this movement of talent in Oz. Um, and if you both had a few words for creatives out there listening, what would they be? Um, man, just like... You know, if you have something you really love, um, whatever sort of creative element that is, um, just stick to it and focus on it. And if you really are passionate, um, you can make it work for yourself. I think, like you, in in the in the creative industries, there's always going to be like big highs and big lows. You know, like you can have like an awesome period you're doing all these shows you're making all this music and then you're going to have lulls and that's just part of it mm. um that's the nature of the industry that's the nature of being a creative like i had um before i really committed to doing music i was like trying to study all these different things at university what were they oh man uh so um it started up it was journalism because i like to write mm. and then it was IT because I was good with computers and then it was um, graphic design because I was creative and I w was a bit of like a Photoshop wizard and then it was um, law I did like Fuck, a few things right yeah mm. um, I did like a good stint at law school just because you know I wanted to help people I was good with my words I was um, you know, I feel like I had the brain for it and I wanted to, like, I wanted to do something with myself, you know? Like, I mm. always knew I had this kind of edge where I was, like, creatively minded and, like... Um, Driven and... Just, like, see the bigger picture of stuff as well. I, um, 
you know, like I wanted to help people and I still want to help people and like just figuring out what that, how I was going to do that. Mm, yep. Um, and then like had a good crack at that. And then the whole time I'm doing this, I'm trying to leave to go to the studio, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to study and um, do that path um, just to, you know, keep everyone happy and try to make something of myself. Like, mm. uh, my grandparents were immigrants, so, um, it was kind of driven into the family. Like you have to work hard, you have to study, yeah, you have to 100%. make something of yourself. Cause they came over here with like, you know, whatever people always say, an apple and five cents, yep. whatever, and just worked. And then, um, that was sort of the same for my parents, their generation, you know, my dad, um, just worked his ass off to get where he was and so I was just trying to follow that blueprint and but do something with myself but then yeah the whole time I'm thinking about music writing rhymes at school mm. whatever um, and then uh, I actually tried to do music at, at uni um, got accepted into that and then I was like this is dumb like I know what I'm doing and so once uh, once I committed this is like I guess to, su to summarise kind of what trying to say like once i fully committed to doing um music mm. and said like okay if there's if i'm not doing music then that's it for me like i don't know mm. what i'm going to be homeless drug addict mm. whatever the hell mm. um yeah you can be all three <laughs> 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 then that's you know um, that's the kind of mindset you gotta have i guess mm. like and um yeah to tie in what i was saying about wanting to help people you know like what an artist really does is make things that people can connect with. And so if you just focus on that, you know, don't focus on being the coolest guy. Don't focus on having the most Instagram followers or mm. being the most fucking lit on Instagram, whatever the hell. Just focus on connecting with people mm. and focus on... Um, making memories as well. Making memories, you know. Like, you don't have to do it to help people. You can just do it for your own self, whatever the fuck. But... Mm. Um, yeah, just, you know, stay focused, commit, and, you know, keep your head on straight. And, like, you notice the people who go the furthest in the industry, on the business side, on the industry side of things, they're the people who are saying stuff that people connect with, doing stuff that people connect with. Mm. Like, if I can write a song that someone, you know, helps them get through their day, even if it's just because they're like, you know, having a little minute where they're just like feeling fresh listening to my song or whatever, mm. um, you know, that's it. That's like, that's what we do it for. For sure. Um, yeah, like, you know, to all the big boys out there with the bellies <laughs> who, who don't want to take their shirt off at the beach, just fucking send it, my dude. Yeah. Bro. Straight up. You know, I was that kid, and I was like, fuck, I hate myself. Yep. Um, and now I just rep it, man. Mm. I mean, be healthy. Yeah, for sure. You know, take care of yourself. I'm not trying to say, like, everyone, you know, if you've got a health issue, whatever, eat healthy, do some exercise. But if you're big boned. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> if you're big body, just run with it. Yeah, that's, that, uh, that's one of the, you know, I feel like I'm really putting on for them. The big for sure, boys. bro. Fucking oath. Tangent. Anyway. Ah, it's all about the tangents, man. Shout out to the big boys. Yeah, straight up. Shout you out to a, the you big got boys. A, you got a big boy mentor here. What about you, Golly? Yeah, I guess building from that, I w we always say just back yourself. Mm. Back your shit. Um, you know, and part of that as well is just like getting it done. So I think, um, you know, a few people kind of ask us as well, like how, how do you guys do what you do or have like all these things to post and, you know, how do we be present online? Um, I think a big part of that is like kind of living it. Yeah. You know, like people want to get involved in this community or, or represent or do something similar. Like the easiest thing is to like put yourself out there, you know, mm. come to the shows, come to the galleries, go to the pop-up stores. Like, you know, if, if you want to be this and like be part of this, like just live it. Mm. You know, um, you're going to have photos to post online if you're at the events, you know what I mean? You're going to have music to make with people if you meet these people and know. memories as well to make the sort of songs about yeah and that's <coughs> yeah. what i mean like we always say as well good mates good memories you mm. know and, and that's all connecting as well to you know having a, a community a safe environment to do your thing um and um 
you know, having a kind of, I guess, a little bit of a mature approach to it, you know, like a lot of us have all been through stuff and, you know, people extend it as well. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, it just goes back to backing yourself, getting it done, you know, because if you get stuck in a dark place or in a rut, like, you know, you still need to, at the end of the day, know what you're doing is right and get mm. it done. 100%. Know? Yeah, I was going to ask you actually if drugs had rattled sort of your community growing up and shit, but. I mean, you, you know, you got people, uh, friends and family and, you know, extended experiences mm. or, you know, like we're you know, 25 now when we linked up, we were like 18, 19 and a lot of us all had different experiences and why we linked up, um, you know, without getting into details, you know, I think a big reason we all did link up was because it was this like positive, safe place that could get us away from a lot of bullshit. Sounds like it, man. You know, sure. so, you know, it became a platform and a group of people that we could, um, Focus on the art, focus on the positive shit and, and um, find a bit more purpose, you know, rather than just like sitting around in a Sniffing in a lines and in a garage. And yeah, and just cooking it, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm not saying you can't have a good time, but as long as you're getting it done, you know. Like, For sure. And like, you know, you need to be present in the community and that's community, you know. There's people to come together and helping each other and supporting community each other. Community and balance as well. Yeah, and if you get lost up in the, the toxic and the negative side of it all, it's hard to do that for other people, you know. You know, linking off what Smack said, you know, you still got to be healthy, you know, look after yourself and, um, yeah, back yourself, get it done and and get involved. Fuck yeah, boys. Keep grinding, stay active, create or die. Yeah. Peace. Nah, cheers for coming on. Nah, cheers for having us, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See you, cunt.